Cigarette butts are filthy, disgusting, and litter thousands of streets, and it is a serious health concern. Dr. Stuart Cressman, who is a physician at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver, is a leader in putting an end to the problem with an innovative solution. Mayor Daryl Masato, mayor of the city of North Vancouver, was the first official to step up to the plate and offer a pilot program in North Vancouver. Together, these two men have a voice and a powerful message to back their cigarette butt recycle proposal. We will meet both of them in this documentary. I'm here with Mayor Daryl Musato, Mayor of the District of North Vancouver, who has implemented uh, a way of cleaning up cigarette butts in the city. Can you tell me about that? Well, thanks for chatting with me, Laurie. Um, I think the number one litter problem we have out there now is the cigarette butts. Right? People don't smoke in their homes anymore, they don't have ashtrays, many cars don't have ashtrays in them anymore. So where do people go to smoke? They go outside. And what do they do with their butts? They put them on the ground and they step on them. Yes. It's a, they're everywhere. I've been working with Dr. Stuart Cressman, who's a doctor city, uh, in the city of Vancouver. Mm -hmm. He's come up with this idea of having a deposit on every cigarette butt. So you would have, uh, when you go to buy a pack of cigarettes, you pay a deposit, much like when you go to buy a case of beer or you buy a bottle of wine or indeed many products at the grocery store, you pay a deposit. Right. Soda pop is, is a prime example. Yes. So the idea would be is that you buy a, a carton or a pack of cigarettes and you pay a dollar per package, five mm -hmm. cents per cigarette But You person then would smoke the cigarette and once they finish, they put it around and step on it and then they pick it up. And they either put it in a little case to hold it, or they put it back in the package that they had purchased, that, that they had. So at the end of the day, you'd have 20, 20 butts in their old cigarette package, I guess they call right. it. And, and the idea would be is that you take that package back to a return at depots, so we put, set some depots up, and you get your dollar back. If someone wanted to be a bit more creative, and let's say they um, didn't have a package, but they just wanted to collect cigarette butts, they could take those butts back, but they would get less a deposit because we couldn't prove that they bought them here in BC. If they brought back a cigarette butt that didn't have uh, the package with it, it could have come in from Alberta, it could have come from Washington State, uh, we'd be given only one cent as opposed to five cents. I see. And that way, people would be encouraged to recycle their butts. So this would be a good idea for the homeless people to go around picking up cigarette butts. Well, not just homeless. I think uh, entrepreneurial might be a better mm -hmm. word. Okay. Uh, people that uh, want to keep their streets and sidewalks clean. Um, they could go around with some gloves, pick up the butts, and take them in for a redeposit return. So other than beautifying the city, what is the uh, advantage of cleaning up cigarette butts from the environment? Well, you know, there's the aesthetic, seeing cigarette butts everywhere, as you mentioned, is just, is ugly. it's not yes. nice to look at. But I think there's even a better reason. And that is that most of the cigarette butts now are ending up on our streets. And the streets have storm drains in them. And when it rains, the water washes off the street and it flows to storm drains. Well, it picks up the cigarette butts. Those storm drains lead to creeks, lead to streams, and ultimately lead to our water courses over our inlet, the Fraser River, the, the Salish Sea, the Georgia Strait. So those butts are ending up there every single day. And uh, our staff at Metro Vancouver are starting to understand that they do harm fish life. And there, some, some of these butts may be eaten and cause uh, some harm to fish. They change the environment for fish live and, and, and uh, marine and mammals and, and, and everything that grows within the, the seas. So it's a big problem and we have to do something about that. And so if we can encourage people to stop putting the butts on the ground but instead putting them out and then putting them into their, the box that they bought them in or a small little container like this that they can put in and then take these back to the return depot and they pay, you know, they, they get the refund back, that would be great. They can so, it. so it just goes inside? It goes inside that, yeah. That is really handy. Yeah, yeah. and so these are little ideas that's, that's uh, true to our nature and basically you don't want any advertising on these at all and people can purchase these and in fact these are actually advocated for not just cigarette butts but gum as well. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so if let's say you had some gum and you had a wrapper, save your wrapper and you can wrap your gum in it, put it in here. Then when you're done, you can get rid of it. That's very attractive. What would that sell for? 
Well, these hopefully we uh, sell for cheap. We used to give these out of the city here. Oh, really? Um, yeah, we gave them all last summer, um, especially when we had the fire hazards with the dry, dry summer we oh, had. Yeah. We didn't want people to be throwing their cigarette butts out of their windows. Mm -hmm. So instead, they would even open them up and just put them out here a little bit and put the butt in here, and then they wouldn't have to throw it out the window. So I think the time has come for us to do this, and I, and I have to, to give credit to the Physicians for Smoke Free Canada and Dr. Stuart Cressman here in Vancouver for coming up with this idea and for, for looking for champions, and I happen to be one that wanted to come along and help them out. And as well, cigarette butts don't break down. It's not like they're, you know, part environment. They're not. They're, they're artificial that, that take many, many, many years. I hope, and that's what I've been told by the few physicians I've been working with. So I think research is being done now. Uh, to, to look at the impact of the cigarettes and what they're doing the butts in our environment. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when people used to smoke in homes or in restaurants, it's ashtrays. We don't see ashtrays anymore now. No. Yeah, so where do people all, they're banished outside, right? So I would imagine, go smoke outside, and what's their ashtray? Is their street or sidewalk. Exactly. Yeah. They just flick it out the car window or yeah, wherever they are. Wherever they are. Now, if they flick out the car window on a summer hot day, and it catches uh, some grass on fire, it can be extremely hazardous. Yes, yes. So we want to encourage those people too, to put the cigarette out and save the butt. Yes. So they don't throw it out, because there's no way anymore. Throwing it away is, is, is a misnomer. Throwing it away is like throwing it into our own backyard. So we have to take better care of our backyard. Yes. Um, the ingredients in, uh, in the cigarette, in the, in the butt, is there a difference in what the what would be in the butt as compared to the cigarette as a whole? And have you done a study on like has um, a study been done on on that? I'm sure there has been, and there's many toxic chemicals, carcinogens, um, heavy metals, and such that they are in the cigarette and in the cigarette butt. And the butt is meant to prevent some of those things, I think, from entering the human body. So that means it's pretty bad stuff. Yeah, and, it, and it's the stuff that we're throwing into our oceans and creeks and things. So um, there's, uh, I think there's some great websites out there to describe the, the toxic chemicals that are in cigarette butts. Mm -hmm. And as well, cigarette butts don't break down. It's not like they're, you know, part of the environment. They're not. They're, they're artificial that, that take many, many, many years to break down. And, and even then, they're, they're very harmful to the environment. I, I, I guess that when you see them scattered all over the streets and the grass, uh, one might think that they might disintegrate and and just fall apart and become part of the earth. They don't. We think that, conveniently so, but it's not true. They stay like that, especially the, the filter part of it. This is a good idea because the uh, um, the cigarette recycle uh, posts that they have in Vancouver with the little containers, that cost goes back to the taxpayers. Yep, it? it goes back to taxpayers. And it's actually a reminder for people to, to smoke. They don't, we don't want to have that reminder. There's an ash, like an ashtray there. Yeah. So what sort of time frame have you got for uh, implementing this? So is, this, is, this is sort of originating now here in North Vancouver City because really no one else has brought it up. And so our hope is, is that we can appeal to the provincial government. The provincial government has really got the authority in this area. They're the ones that, that determine the deposit legislation, the EPR, which is Extended Produce Responsibilities. Um, but we wouldn't want to go beyond that. We want to make it such that it's something that anytime anybody buy, buys a pack of cigarettes, they pay a deposit, and then the deposit is, is paid back on return of the buck. And the provincial government needs to step up for that. And my, my approach is, is to raise the awareness, see if I can get other municipalities supporting this. So, uh, since I brought it up, I've had a number of other mayors asking me about this and other communities saying, hey, way to go. So if we can get enough momentum, we can encourage the provincial government to, to take action. Have you made a proposal to Premier Clark? We have not as yet. We've written um, our MLA, and so our, we're going to hopefully try to get some bit more momentum at the municipal level to be able to write the Premier okay. and to, to say, hey, this is the way we need to go. You know, the ironic thing about this is it's probably supported by 99% of the even smokers have told me it's a good idea. Yes. So it's something that's sitting there waiting for any senior government level to pick up and to hit it out of the park. And I think we have the expertise, we have the knowledge, we have the, the ability. To, well, that would be up with the provincial government. They, uh, they use existing depots, 
Do we use uh, grocery stores? Do we use gas stations? Do gas stations issue the refunds? We, I think we can work these details out so that they can collect them and then they can dispose of them in a much more uh, safer way. People bring in a bunch of cigarette butts. They can do it by weight, they can do it by number, or they can do it by package. So if you bring a pack in, it's got 20 cigarette butts, perfect. If we take those, we throw those into this bin that's gonna be recycled, and here's your dollar back. And they can give it right back to you there. And I'll bet you within six months of the program operating, you won't see a cigarette butt anywhere on the ground. Probably not. If I was the premier, if I was a Minister of Health, I would be on this in a heartbeat. And I'd be directing my staff to look at how can we implement this program in British Columbia. Okay. Um, but I'm not the Premier. Uh, I hope the Premier is listening. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to do everything I can to try to raise this awareness. And, and it's people like you, I think, that we need to thank because you're helping raise this awareness. I've done a number of radio and television interviews and things like that. Yes. And, and uh, it's gone as far as Winnipeg, I think, picked it up. Yeah. So, you know, the more people hear about the better, and it, the time has come. The founder of the idea to clean up cigarette butts is Dr. Cressman, who is a physician at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. We will be meeting with him at his office, where he will explain to us how he came up with the idea and how he plans to implement it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Dr. Stuart Preisman. I'm an endocrinologist at St. Paul's Hospital. Um, and I'm also a member of uh, Physicians for a Smoke-Free Canada um, because I have a passion for anti-tobacco advocacy um, uh, with a, a number of different things, uh, including uh, uh, smoke-free multi-unit dwellings, uh, smoke-free parks and beaches, um, eventually trying to raise uh, the age uh, of purchasing tobacco to 21, which is actually starting to happen in the States now, um, and several other things. But one thing that I've uh, been involved with a lot um, is uh, trying to get rid of uh, cigarette butt litter um, and I've proposed a uh, deposit return system uh, for cigarette butts uh, in order to, uh, to achieve those objectives. How many chemicals are in a cigarette like that makes it so poisonous? Like what, why is a cigarette so poisonous? Well, that's, that's a hard question to answer. Again, there's about five to 7,000 carcinogens, which are the numbers that I've, that I've seen. But there, there isn't one chemical that we can point to and say, hey, this is the one that causes lung cancer. I mean, if it was that simple, then there would have been opportunities to do something about it. But again, when you're burning plant material, or burning any material, uh, just the combustion of process causes multiple, multiple chemicals, many of which are, are dangerous. Why do you feel that cigarette butts should be cleaned up from our environment? Well, I think that uh, just one, just seeing the mess is, is really uh, off-putting to, to say the least. Um, however, uh, environmentally it's, it's a uh, significant issue because uh, it's actually the, the number one source of litter uh, out there certainly by number and even on some surveys I've seen even by weight. Uh, look at, at the amount of, of cigarette litter in, in Vancouver. It's about one million cigarette butts are littered daily in Vancouver. So the numbers are staggering. Uh, worldwide it's, it's in the billions daily, uh, trillion or, or several trillion a year. So the numbers are staggering. They get into waterways, uh, they can affect birds and fish, uh, etc. And then the other issue with them is they serve, as in a sense, as free, perverse advertising for the tobacco industry. And you know, you may think that that wouldn't attract anyone, but it may actually attract the exact sorts that the tobacco industry is trying to to hook teenage or, or preteen kids that have a bit of a rebellious, a rebellious streak, you know, a rebel without a cause, and they see that, and you know, somehow it, it appeals to them. So there's that, and then as well, if somebody's trying to quit smoking, the constant triggers uh, also is, is not going to do them any good. It's just going to make it more difficult. Uh, and lastly, uh, in places where you're not allowed to smoke, at entranceways to buildings, on parks, beaches, uh, etc., if you see it, there's a whole bunch of cigarette butts, 
and you've seen that a whole bunch of other people have uh, you know, ignored the rules, I think it makes you more likely to, to do the same yourself. So there's potential public health benefits to getting rid of litter as well as, as the environmental benefits. However, I think that really the primary focus uh, of getting rid of cigarette litter is really an environmental one. So the, the, print, the primary goal of the public health message is to reduce the visibility of smoking, denormalization of smoking. Uh, when you have all these ashtrays out there, you're more or less saying, hey, it's not so bad, it's okay to smoke as long as you, as long as you don't make a mess with it after. As far as uh, the campaign to do something about this, what, what do you see the first step being? Well, I, th I think you need something that's, that's going to work. You need to come up with, with an idea that's, that's different and is going to have much greater success. By putting a value on the cigarette butts, you can succeed in doing that and you can uh, have something that could have close to 100% to efficacy if, it's, uh, you know, if, if the program is, uh, is uh, it's done in a, in, a, in a good sense. So what I've proposed is that um, there be a one dollar charge, uh, deposit charge on each cigarette pack. Uh, so in other words, uh, one dollar for 20 butts or five cents per butt. And uh, the packs would be marked and when somebody brings back a marked pack with 20 butts in it, they receive their dollar back. So hopefully by doing that, the primary goal would be hopefully most people would want their dollar back and would not litter. Um, however, if they choose to litter, no problem. Someone else will take their money for them. Um, there needs to be a differential. So there needs to be the reason why it's five cents per butt returned with the pack, but only one cent per butt taken off the street, <coughs> is that with the butts off the street, there's no way to prevent cheating. So somebody's gonna come with you, oh, I'm gonna go drive down to Seattle, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of butts, so I'm gonna drive up to Vancouver and get some money for it. Well. As there's no way to prevent that, since it's only one cent, even if, if cheating is 50% by weight, the city still would be ahead, or the province, hopefully, because this really should be a provincial program. Uh, the province would be ahead, still three cents per littered butt. So there'd be enough of a buffer there to cover cheating and also to pay for funding the program itself in terms of getting the infrastructure up and running. Um, so, I mean, the deposit parts obviously will work the same way it works on, on bottles, and we've proven that uh, the return part, uh, if people don't return it themselves, uh, binners or other uh, collectors will be willing to do that for the lower rates. So, there's no reason why this program won't work. All we need is someone who's got the foresight and, and the political will to stick his head out and say, hey, we'll be first. And I think if someone is willing to be first, um, I think that other jurisdictions are going to rapidly copy it. Uh, this is a worldwide problem, and I think that the solution will potentially go worldwide very rapidly. Um, BC was first in the world with a, with a bottle uh, deposit return program, so I think we can be first in the world for, for this as well. Okay. Um... Now, I, I suppose there, there's going to be a percentage of people that, uh, like you say, won't return. They, they don't care about the dollar. It's not worth it to them. Um, is there a chance that uh, with all the people that would be out collecting miscellaneous butts that it would come close to almost breaking even or maybe losing a bit of money? and? in uh, keeping up with the collection? Well, I, I, I think that, I mean, the, the five cent and one cent are, are numbers that I've chosen, and if, if the math ends up not working, if there ends up being so much more uh, 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 from money coming in from butts elsewhere or whatever, then, then that can be adjusted. The one cent can be put down to a half cent, the five cents can be put up to ten cents. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that can, if if the math doesn't work out, it can very easily be modified or there can be a small fee that's not returnable. Say the dollar maybe only 90 cents are returnable or a or dollar ten with a dollar returnable. So there's multiple ways to do the finances. So certainly there's a, made, a way to make it work. However, I think with the five cent, one cent differential, um, I think that the program would be successful because the amount of cheating would have to be spectacular 
in order to be able, it would have to be 400% to, to overcome that, that differential. So I think that that differential will work. Again, we've proven that the one cent is sufficient to have people collect the, the pre-littered butts. And I believe that a, a dollar should be sufficient to get the majority of people to want to get their dollar back. You know, the average person smokes uh, close to a pack a day. So, uh, so uh, throwing out a dollar a day is throwing out, you know, $365 a year. Can I come back and say one thing about tobacco in general? Yes. Um, so I'd like to make a statement about, uh, about smoking and, and tobacco in general. Um, a lot of people have gotten the impression today that the battle against uh, smoking is one that we've won. Um, and this couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, two generations after the Surgeon General's report uh, in 1964, um, still about one in five kids today take up smoking. Uh, it will end up killing no less than half of them. Um, smoking remains by far and away the leading cause of preventable death in Canada. So smoking kills <coughs> 45,000 Canadians a year. So that's more than alcohol, drugs, uh, drinking and driving, murder and suicide. You can just sort of walk across yeah. the street. And so you can see that there's a canister uh, right over here. Uh, this one doesn't really look like it's been used uh, very much. If you look right under it, uh, there's tons of cigarette butts. If you look uh, a little bit to the side, uh, the street corner under it, there, there's even more. Uh, you know, the, the practical problem with these uh, canisters is <coughs> that they're just not used. I did a calculation that showed that uh, even where they're installed, they only collect uh, somewhere between 3 and 6% of, of cigarette butt litter. On top of that, by having these canisters, you're doing the tobacco industry's work for them. What they would like is their product to be renormalized. If they, if there were ashtrays, you know, ten of them on every street, they would love that. The whole idea is you want to eliminate uh, the visibility of smoking and its residua. And by having a deposit return program, you succeed in doing that. You you decrease the visibility of smoking as opposed to increasing the visibility of smoking. Deposit return, you're going to get somewhere between 90 and 100 percent of the program is designed properly. It just has much, much greater potential and at the same time it's consistent with public health objectives. It lessens the visibility of smoking as opposed to increasing the visibility of smoking. And there's cigarette butts. This is beautiful BC. Yeah, beautiful BC. And this is greenest city. Yeah. You know, I think we can do much better. Yeah, this is terrible when you actually look at it. If you had to count all this, I mean, how, how many, how many do you think we've, we've passed? Well, it's, it's, it, oh, we, we must have already passed a couple hundred, <laughs> I think, in this short, uh, short walk. Um, that basically is, is what it would be like. They would be snapped up right away.